Can anything hold SpaceX back from its dominance in the launch industry? No, of course not. Ever since the company came on the scene, it's been doing what no one thought was possible. And to this day, it continues to push what can be done in spaceflight. Just recently, Elon Musk's company turbocharged the space race with two rocket launches within four hours. And this has completely shocked the whole rocket industry. But how did SpaceX normalize those rocket launches? Well, let's find out all about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. It's becoming like an airport. Just before Christmas 2017, a SpaceX rocket flying over a California highway caused a multi-car pileup. Distracted drivers slowed down and stared up as a bright streak lit up the night sky, prompting reports on social media of meteors, UFOs, and even Santa Claus. Today, drivers on the east coast of Florida barely glance as rockets taking off from Cape Canaveral soar overhead. The first time I saw one, I pulled the car over to the side of the road to watch it, one Orlando taxi driver told us ahead of SpaceX's latest launch. Nowadays, I look at it like a plane. It's just normal. Indeed, on Friday, March 17th, the California-based company launched two Falcon 9 rockets within the span of just a little more than four hours. At 12.26 p.m. local time, a Falcon 9 carried 52 SpaceX Starlink satellites right up to low Earth orbit from a launch pad at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. A mere four hours and 12 minutes later, another Falcon 9 rocket delivered two large communication satellites into geostationary transfer orbit for the Luxembourg-based satellite company SES, that from Cape Canaveral, Florida. The launch of the two SES satellites was overall SpaceX's 19th orbital mission for the calendar year. Chief Executive Elon Musk says he's aiming for 100 launches in 2023, breaking the firm's previous record of 61 set last year. Happily, as of today, the company's launching a Falcon rocket every 4.1 days and remains on pace to launch approximately 90 rockets before the end of this year. To put this into perspective, a decade ago, the U.S. launched an average of 15 to 20 orbital rockets a year. In 2022, the U.S. recorded its most launches in any calendar year ever with 78 orbital flights. This year, barring a catastrophic accident with a Falcon 9 booster, that number will easily get into triple digits. The all-time record for orbital launches in a single year, it's held by the Soviet Union with 101, but that's way back in 1982. A decade ago, SpaceX was just an upstart in the global launch industry. In 2013, it launched the Falcon 9 rocket three times in a single year for the first time. This was actually a pretty monumental achievement for the company as it introduced both its second launch pad at Vandenberg Air Force Base and a substantially upgraded variant 1.1 of the Falcon 9 rocket. It also flew commercial missions for the first time and began experimenting with ocean-based landings. In that competitive environment a decade ago, SpaceX still lagged far behind its main competitors, including Roscosmos, Europe-based Arianespace, and U.S.-based United Launch Alliance. This year, those numbers have swung massively around. Through today, Russia has launched three rockets, two Soyuz and one Proton, in 2023 as a whole. Arianespace, they haven't launched a single mission, and neither has ULA. Put another way, SpaceX's main competitors over the last decade have launched three rockets this entire year. SpaceX, by comparison, just launched three rockets in three days, including the CRS-27 mission flown for NASA on the evening of March 14th. Increasingly, only the combined efforts of China's government and its nascent commercial launch sector can even challenge SpaceX's launch dominance. That nation has a total of 11 orbital launches so far this year. The key differentiator from its competition, its reusability, with some refurbished Falcon 9s having now flown more than a dozen times. It's this workhorse that's allowed SpaceX to transform access to space, cutting launch costs from hundreds of millions of dollars down to tens of millions, and offering everyone from governments to startups the ability to send payloads to orbit. Regular and reliable launches and landings mean there's no longer the anticipation or anxiety that came with the early Falcon 9 missions, where malfunctions or explosions were part of the development process. But with anything as complex as a rocket launch, complacency is the enemy of safety. 
A SpaceX security guard who's worked at Cape Canaveral for the last five years told us that each mission requires renewed focus and discipline to make them seem so seamless. People get used to it, but we can't ever look at it as routine, he said. There's too much at stake. In the case of the crewed missions, people's lives are at risk. This waning public interest was no more evident than with the rapid progression of NASA's Apollo program. By the time Apollo 13 lifted off in 1970, less than one year after the first ever moon landing, public apathy had reached such a point that the launch was not even televised. It was only when the mission began to have difficulties that the TV networks began to cover it. It demonstrated how quickly something so extraordinary can seem entirely ordinary once novelty and risk is removed. In the 1940s and 50s, newly opened airports would build large observation platforms so the public could come and watch planes take off and land. Nowadays, even the most die-hard enthusiasts are pretty blasé about rocket launches. I don't watch every launch at all anymore. I'll stream some of the really big ones, but back in the day, I would get up in the middle of the night to catch the launches because there were maybe only five a year. Now there's literally like two a week on average from SpaceX alone. It's insane. It's really hard to keep up with. Says Tim Dodd, host of the Everyday Astronaut YouTube channel. He said that during a recent broadcast. As the head of the moon programs at Airbus, Didier Radola says the rapid reusability of Falcon 9 and the ever-increasing launch cadence has seen SpaceX almost single-handedly revive the once moribund Cape Canaveral. It's more like an airport with the amount of launches happening, he says. Long-term goals like setting up a base on the moon and missions to Mars are now becoming concrete. Dreams are finally becoming affordable. Despite the geographical limitations, some within the industry predict that there will be a point in the future when launches to orbit will exceed planes taking off on the surface of Earth. Musk founded SpaceX in 2002 with the initial goal of making humanity a multiplanetary species. The ambition remains, and after 21 years, it's beginning to be realized with the creation of SpaceX's latest rocket, Starship. Currently under development at SpaceX's Starbase facility on the Gulf of Mexico, Starship's the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built. The first orbital flight test could take place as early as this month, and there'll likely be huge interest as SpaceX attempts to push past another frontier on the path to Mars. But when public interest surrounding Starship does inevitably begin to dwindle, the pace of progress is unlikely to slow down. Having pioneered the private space industry, SpaceX is now being joined by dozens of competitors that will not only increase the rate of rocket launches, but also continue to push down the cost. The commercial opportunities mean that the new space race is no longer primarily funded by the taxpayer and therefore does not depend on public interest or politics for support. Well, that just about wraps it up for today's episode. And hey, don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.